Hello, it's Andy Graham with the Ask Andy Show. Uh, it's Tuesday. I've kind of had a few days off here because of my father's uh, funeral. Um, it's May 20th, Tuesday, and uh, it's a long weekend. Um, I'm Andy Graham with the Ask Andy Show. I've traveled uh, nonstop for 16 plus years, and I'm Soon I'll be in Vil Vilcabamba, Ecuador. On the one week from now, I leave. I'm really quite grateful. The weather here is killing me. Uh, I've traveled 16 plus years and went to 90 countries, and I'm going to Ecuador soon, and then I'll be to. I hope to be in uh, Europe in the fall. Okay, Jeff from Cincinnati asks. I know this is a very general question and many countries have different and unique rules and regulations, but I am interested in advice you have for applying for visas. Uh, the reason I'm asking this is because I have a few, I had a few problems with visas in the past. When I was trying to get a, visa, a Russian, Russian visa, I was re required to provide all the information about where I was traveling, where I was staying, and, and a a flight confirmation concerning how I, how I was getting in and out. They made me scramble a lot and information booked earlier than I like and it ultimately cost me money. He says I should have BS them. Okay, right there he answered his own question. I should have BS them. Bottom line is, I, I don't know what to do, and I'm I'm come from a very religious family and a very moral background, and I really pride myself in not uh, not lying. And uh, on the other side is the visa; they actually will ask. I mean, like to go to Russia uh, or go to many countries, they will actually ask for a round trip ticket, paid in you know already paid for, uh, reservations already reserved, um, and a basically a complete itinerary as if, you know, you know exactly which hotels you're staying in and exactly where you're going and when you're leaving, uh, which is almost contradictory to what you want to do on travel. I mean, it's 100% the wrong way to travel, to lock yourself in that way, um, because it removes all the enjoyment and the uh, it just makes traveling work okay you know you got an itinerary but a lot of travelers do do this and you know and truthfully on a tour that's kind of what they do that, that's what they set up is an itinerary where you lock it in the trouble is is that you know when you buy a plane ticket and you buy you, you reserve these things reversing them if anything changes becomes really difficult um, Almost any long-term haul, long-term traveler, anybody you'll ever talk to says, we don't even think about it. We just know we have to bull bullshit them. We have to basically create a fake everything, okay? And um, very, you know, you got to be careful. There, I mean, there are there are things that you could say or do that you know they could check on. But as far as I know, they they hard they don't check on this stuff. Uh, I applied for a Russian visa in Mongolia and, and they forced me to go from the embassy over to this specific travel agent and she was bound and determined that she was going to make a fortune for me, from me. Um, and you know, Russia is the worst. Russia is incredibly. I do know that if you want to enter through, to, I, I, I tried in China and I applied in Mongolia to get a visa to Russia and I finally just said, uh, I told the travel agency I'd rather go to Thailand and say goodbye than go to, to Russia right now. But over in Germany or Finland and Latvia and these places, they, they've got it well figured out and they make it a little easier. And it's not so controlled. But generally, you, you need to know how to get the visa and you need to... The best advice I, you know, the only advice I know that is slightly helpful is to get on the Lonely Planet Thorn Tree, which is a forum, and you know you got to join it, and you can ask them questions. Now that the trouble is, then again, there's people on the on the Thorn Tree that are lying and cheating, that are trying to convince you to do all these things that you don't have to do. But if you stayed on there long enough, 
you can sort of ask enough questions and people will reveal how they say how did you get your visa but if a person is telling you how to get a visa you got to you got to get a person that's a tourist you don't want anybody that acts like they're an expert that's the problem with the lonely planet thorn tree is full of um, lurking people that are not lurking you got these regulars on there that just dominate the things and act like anybody that doesn't know already is is stupid and I've actually even complained against them because it's quite annoying. I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I'm an expert traveler. I don't really need. I was applying for a visa to, I wanted to apply for a visa in uh, Ghana for Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, right next door one time. And the lady's just totally full of crap. And she was acting like there's one way to do it. And, there, and visas are really up to the decision of the, uh, the people in the visa place. I mean, they they don't often turn down a visa if you're honest uh, you know but there are many people that are trying to get into countries dishonestly obviously we got an illegal alien problem coming into America from the Mexicans and all the people from Central and South America and that's the uh, same kind of problem they will get but those guys do exactly the same thing and that's one of the sad parts about visas is that it's wh whoever's got the biggest line of crap gets in and Trust me, they do the same thing to the American embassies, and, and, and it's it's all uh, it's very very who you know, what you know, and how you say it thing, and not really whether or not you're qualified. So you you really have no choice; you have to do it. The onward tickets you have to learn how to fake them. Um, I really, if you want really inside information on how to do this, you know. <laughs> Jeff from Cincinnati uh, pay for an hour of consulting and I'll explain you exactly how to do it and make it brain dead easy for you. Um, can't really explain this completely on on the uh, thing but it, there's ways and people can help you to do this and I have ways to make it so that I can just have a package put together and, and it's to, now I always do carry well one thing I do which is I highly recommend you do when you're thinking about visas is we well, got two different sites well I use abriggs.com a website to, to get visas and they've been really successful and they're going to make sure that by the time you leave the USA you're going to have it done um, but you still got to fake stuff for them <laughs> okay but you put together a package and then they, they look at the package and then they go get the visa and it's almost a guarantee because you're paying them $200 to get it done. That's the easy way with if you're just going to one country. But if you're going to sequential countries, like they call it uh, sequential travel, going, you know, uh, you know, you could go to Mexico, Guatemala, whatever. Just keep going. Or if you're going to, you know, Russia, then you're going to Mongolia, all these different countries. But it's really important in Africa because you almost always re require a visa. The, the countries where you think that visas shouldn't be required are the countries that require visas and the countries that where they should, you know, where they should be requir requiring a visa that don't. So it's, it's kind of all backwards, okay? But if you really want to guarantee you get one, I, I just would go with this A. Briggs company. Um, because it's if you're only going to one country but if you're going to like Africa or the places where the visas are more difficult you choose the country to start and then you most of the time the country next door to the country where you're going is always easy to get a visa to that country everything's just hardwired simple to get a visa so I I make trips to the easy visa I might I might get a visa like I got a visa one time with A. Briggs to Cote d'Ivoire and then while I was in there I got in Cote d'Ivoire I got a visa to Ghana and then worked my way then at, at the border of certain and then I got another visa for Benin inside Lomi Togo and so I just kind of worked my way through and there's a visa, a visa pathway okay uh, but very difficult. Sadly, tourism evolves around places that have easy visas. Uh, like, for example, it's very diff it's difficult to go to um, Brazil. 
They, they require a visa, and uh, this just kills the American tourist because they they make you pay a hundred dollars or something, and they they do it. So the tourism just totally drops. While in in Senegal, Senegal has always been considered a popular destination for travelers in Africa, and it's just because they give a visa. Kenya is the same thing. Kenya and uh, South Africa, three places where you can get a visa just by arriving. And it's not the reason to go to a country, it's because the visa is easy, but that ends up being a sort of a, a mental thing that this is a better country because they made it easy. Okay, um, always carry, you know, passport folders. I, I came across the border from Ghana into Togo just a short while ago, and they were giving me a runaround at the thing, and they said, do you have photos? And I had my photos with me. And I just arrived at the border, and I crossed over into uh, Caratogo, and they gave me a visa. Be but if I wouldn't have had the fo photos, they might have said, oh, you really need to go to Lomi or whatever. So you always need to have, you know, like, photo, visa photos ready in, in your possession to do things. Um, because if somebody's going to help you, they need all the things they did. I always carry a couple copies of my birth certificate. You get they're like a dollar or something like that and I'll carry copies of my passport because a lot of times when you apply for a visa they require a copy of the passport getting um, getting onward tickets whether you're, you're reserving a hotel I will tell you one thing I did learn I I got some help getting a you should always you know if you're going to show the hotel reservation you should make it so that you could stay two or three months. I I applied for uh, uh, in t Thailand, I applied for a, a visa to Ivory Coast and I had this hotel reservation given to me by my friend and uh, he only showed it for a week and so they only gave me like 20 days, 30 days. It was horrible. I mean, you know, I I was really quite upset because it didn't, it looked like I was just but they could have gave me 90 days, right? And you really got to make sure that you do a visa that's for as long as possible. You never want to get a visa. I, I only buy, I normally only buy round uh, one-way tickets. So for the, the very idea of me buying a round-trip ticket is just weird. And, but most people are sort of into a channel. But the wanderlust, the idea of wandering around is really difficult when it's required visas. So you're always trying for the long-term visa. Um, he asked me if I know any countries that uh, I, I got a... Togo's an unusual country. It's one of the reasons I go there is because it is an easy visa. I can get a visa on arrival in a way. They give me seven days and then I can go make an application and as an American they give me one year. Togo, West Africa. So do I know many countries that do that? No, but it's really not the reason to travel. Okay, you really, you really, there's always a way to somehow renew your visa. And the minute I'm entering a country, I'm talking with the people on the ground. And this is the problem with visas, is that just like the Lonely Planet Thorn Tree, you can get on that, but you need this, these people talking. And you need to be able to find the traveler's huddle, the group of people where they hang out. And this is one reason why uh, sometimes, like, you know, you, you've got to figure out where the long-term uh, expats are hanging out. If you don't know that, and then you don't know the, the hotel they hang out, the bars they hang out, you're really just lost. I, I met a guy in uh, Togo, and he, I don't, I don't know, he didn't even know where Kojo Viacopi was. He had been there for almost two years. I was really quite amazed because if you don't connect with the local, I mean, the local expats, you're really missing all the uh, table of knowledge. I've actually got a thing on, uh, on each website. We've got like a hundred different places to go live. And there's a table of knowledge. There's actually a place. There's always the one place where all the expats come at a certain time and hang out. And they can make your life simple. And so these are the people to ask to do it <laughs> and uh, what you don't want to do is uh, 
think that a travel agent's going to help you. They they're just there for money. They got to they they very seldom. I mean, if the I mean, like in La Guatemala, I'll go there to Guatemala. You go to the table of knowledge. It's like the dinosaur cafe, and they'll say, "Hey, go over to the El Ranchero, and you can apply for a visa, a visa extension right there." And it's real simple. But you got to get to the right sources of information, and you have to be very, very careful because there's so many people trying to to lie. If you get if you apply for a visa on the internet, you'll see that every single country on the planet is you, you can arrange and pay for a visa and in a lot of these countries you don't even need a visa you can just arrive at the airport and it's really you know that it's really and they're very they're not to be trusted so you gotta do it but the only company that I can recommend is abriggs.com and they have different offices around the United States and they can they can speed it up they can do it faster and this is the way to make it so that you you can get into a really tough country. Like right now, if I wanted to go to Nigeria, I, I need to get, I want to get a visa to Nigeria. Um, I would, I would use them. It's worth the, it's like an insurance policy, guaranteed I get it. I got turned down in, uh, I applied for a Nigerian visa in Lomi, Togo, and I, I didn't get one, and so they said basically go home and get one. <laughs> and that, that's about the advice I got. Um, if you if you uh, want to buy an hours of uh, thing, I can show you. I can connect you with people that can help you to get this stuff done, and so you don't have to do the work. And you, and it's uh, real easy. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff from Cincinnati. Find the off button. I haven't done this in so long that I uh, forgot what I'm doing.